Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Miami's my home, my casa su casa. Yes, we are back again for another episode of Real Housewives of Miami, season six, episode 14, and it's called Row, Row, Row Me Off This Boat. And by the way, my name is Sharon, aka the Bell and the Nostalgic Runner, and child, Miami continues to bring the heat. They just, oh my gosh. And then, and what, I saw the previews for next week's episode, baby. Whew, I think I'm going to be satisfied next episode, and I'll explain in a little bit why. But without further ado, let's get into it. So it's day two, and they're in Mexico City. And um, as we know from the previous episode, Dr. Nicole was not able to be there on day one. Well, technically, well, yeah, basically day one. And she gets there. Um, so we're seeing Dr. Nicole there getting glammed up. And Julia greets her. We find out that she actually ended up working a 12-hour shift at the hospital. Because, um, you know, Dr. Nicole is just that, a doctor. And um, she took a red-eye flight to get there. And she arrived there around 2.45 a.m. So she probably got no sleep, <laughs> I imagine. And... Um, She's um, and the rest of the ladies are getting um, ready as well to go to the church to pray to um, Saint Guadalupe, um, and also to while the while the rest of the ladies are getting ready, um, Julia is recapping to Julia. Sorry, Julia is recapping to Dr. Nicole what happened at the dinner the day before at the art studio because we find out that Larsa actually. Um, sent um, Dr. Nicole a message and <laughs> kind of saying how weird it was because it totally was that Eyes Wide Shut dinner. I'm always going to call it that even though it was at the art studio, but child was giving Eyes Wide Shut. I still would have wanted to be there, but <laughs> so while this is happening, uh, Marisol and Adriana, sorry, Marisol and Alexia, they're getting ready as well. Um, Adriana, sorry. I keep saying Adriana. Alexia is getting her candle ready because she's, you know, going to have that. And um, I do have questions because I was not um, born or raised um, Catholic. And I think even um, in, and when it comes to like true Catholicism, when it comes to like Spain and, you know, Spanish people doing Catholicism. I know they have a little bit more to it than we do here at the States. Um, I, I would love to know, learn more about it. But anyway, because the candle, I was like, oh, okay. Because I never understood what that candle is for. I know it's, I don't know. I will guess I'll have to ask one of these days. But anyway, or if you know, just put it down in the comments. Um, so, um... We find out that Julia is actually not excited about going to the church because she actually separated herself from religion 23 years ago when she lost her son. And this point is super important because it comes up later again this episode. Um, the church, with her being in the church, actually, she went there for answers and it did the opposite, which you do hear that with people um, I know with a lot of people, it's the opposite where the church is where you look for answers, but you also do hear the opposite where it actually makes you, you know, have doubt when it comes to that. And that's where Julia's at. And it gave her more grief and pain. So um, anyway, we also find out that Adriana, <laughs> actually Adriana, she's not coming. Um, due to her performance the next day, so she is resting because the day before she pretty much spent most of the day rehearsing and then she met them for the Eyes Wide Shut dinner. So she needs to get rested and really get ready for this performance because it's the next day. So um, the ladies do leave for church um, and Julia and Kiki on the bus, they are kissing. And Julia's excuse is she's helping her put her lip gloss on better. Child, <laughs> and the whole entire time while this is happening, Gertie's looking at them like, "What? WTF? What? What is? This? What are you doing?" <laughs> and um, but anyway, Gertie, Dr. Nicole, Julia, and Kiki—they're all one van. 
And then Alexia, Lisa, and Larsa, and Mirasol are in the other van. Lisa's talking about Lenny again um, as they're on their way to arriving. And I want to allow Grace for why she's talking about Lenny so much because we find out later on in the episode that the settlement has to get done pretty much that day. They have to come up with an agreement or else they have to go to court. Um, so she literally has to make a decision while on the trip. And, um, so that's why it's coming up. But considering her behavior this whole entire season and what happens towards the end of this episode, I I'm sorry, but I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I was like, let me say it for one more time for the people in the back. I don't care. Um, anyway, so they do arrive at the church and the church is beautiful as expected. I would think it would be because it's in, you know, one of those very religious areas in the world. Um, and also to side note, I actually am someone who actually loves going to cathedrals, even though I'm not as religious as I used to be. I'm pretty spirit. I'm not religious really at all. I'm spiritual. I do believe in God, I believe in the higher power, but I'm not, I'm not as religious. And I do technically identify as a Christian, even though I don't go to church regularly or anything like that. Um, but I'm very liberal in my thinking. So I don't know if most Christians would think I'm a Christian, but you know what? Whatever. I think I am. So that's, that's all that matters, right? Right. Anyway, <laughs> so the church is beautiful and, um, I, oh, I mentioned that because cathedrals are pretty. I'm sorry, but like the stainless, the stainless, um, um, work that's done in a church. Like even while I was dating, I was dating one of my exes and he was like, he was pretty much atheist. He even appreciated it just because it is pretty, whether you believe in that or not. But I know in Julia's case is a whole entire different situation and she actually does get into it. So, but Julia is there being supportive, even though she has, she doesn't feel good being in the church. She actually feels the opposite of how everyone else is feeling. Um, Gertie is actually getting some relief there. She ends up getting super emotional while there and just vents and just starts crying. Um, we see something that we wanted to see a little bit, um, but it still isn't, it still isn't quite what I want, but it's better than nothing. Larsa does comfort her and hug her and says, I got you. And then also Alexia on the opposite side is comforting her as well. And it's just a beautiful moment. I'll be honest, I did enjoy this because it was a rare moment where everyone was coming together. And even um, Mirasol narrated this perfectly. She's like, you know, this is a rare moment where we all want the same thing. We want Gertie to get healthy and beat this cancer. So I found that very beautiful, very empowering. So that was a great way to start the episode. Okay, so next, after that, because that was pretty emotional, I did get a little teary-eyed there. Um, the ladies do leave the church. And Gertie mentioned um, to the ladies in the van that it was a breakthrough between her and Larsa as well as the rest of the ladies. And um, she actually starts to get emotional again, but it's due to how... Julia was receiving her experience while being in the church because she does open up about it. She states that her son's funeral um, was the last time she was in the church. And I forgot to mention this um, when we first mentioned Julia and why she's, you know, no longer into religion. She actually shared at the first episode of the reboot, or not the first episode, but the first season of the reboot, that she lost her child um, due to um, shaking baby syndrome, I think is what it's called. Doing things, but it wasn't through her hands, but she feels guilty. It was actually through a nanny she thought she could trust. And the nanny actually, well, unalived her child. Yeah, we'll go where I say that. The, um, the nanny unalived her child. And so as a result, she has this guilt because she thought she could trust this nanny. And so she had to go to her baby's funeral, which that 
matters later on, so I'm, I'm kind of just giving you some crumbs here. So Gertie is emotional about that because Gertie, for those who don't realize, um, I would say this is kind of, to me, the case of a lot of the newer people that are on this show. They all seem like empaths, especially Gertie. Um, she seems like a true empath. So she's crying for her because, you know, that... I couldn't imagine doing that. That's that's horrible. Um, so when so basically Julia does share more in her confessional. This so when all this happened, she only had her dog to kind of comfort her um, while she was going through all this grief. So this pretty much she pretty much explains that this is why she's so connected to animals, and for her, her farm is her temple. Like that is where she finds her peace. So because of the emotional support that she had through her animals, and I can, I totally get that. Anyone that has pets, you already know. It's a thing. Like I have two of my cats and if you guys have seen any of my other videos, they're not reviews. My cats like to make appearance, especially Whisper. And yeah, they've been a blessing. <laughs> anyway, so, um, the ladies are in the other van um, consoling Lisa and the ladies, um, because Le Lisa is still, even with this scene with Lisa, she is treating prayer as if like she only should pray when she wants something. And Alexia literally had to say, that's not how that works. And same thing with Marisol. And she's like, no, 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 I do pray all the time. She cleaned it up really quickly, but you, it, based off of her behavior and how she's been acting the whole season and really her past behavior just in general, I don't know. I, I call cap. And anyway, so the ladies do get back to the hotel. They're getting ready for the gondola ride. Um, there's a little bit of a mini Real Housewives montage where we see all the ladies getting ready. Uh, ready. And while this happens, Lisa does talk to her lawyer um, about getting the settlement deal going. And so she is looking to potentially get this done, sign the papers, because they don't want to go to court. She definitely doesn't. And But then Lenny calls her about the settlement. And all this, by the way, is happening with no cameras, no recording. So we don't really know what's being said here. And she says, and so he didn't want to be recorded, so he added one more thing to the settlement deal. And we see before commercial break that Lisa's hysterical about it. And we do find out later on, according to Lisa, what it is, but I don't know. I'm starting to just feel away about Lisa as a whole just because of her behavior this whole entire season. I don't know. I hate to say it, but I'm going to call a thing a thing. I don't know if I believe Lisa all the way when it comes to all this stuff. Let's not get twisted. Lenny is basula, but like, what does that make you for being with someone who's like that for how many years? I'm just, I don't know. I, I hate to, I hate to be that person, but I might be also really, really biased based off of what's been happening. Because I've been seeing some microaggressions that I don't like. I've been calling it out. Y'all know I've been calling it out. And this episode, it really, it, it took the cake for me. But anyway, moving on. Okay, so then next, um, the, the ladies are getting ready to go to the gondola ride. Adriana does join the rest of the ladies. She's well rested. And they switch up the order of who's in the van. So um, Dr. Nicole, Gertie, and Alexia are in the van with Adriana reca recapping how church went. And then Julia and Kiki are kissing again. <laughs> Julia, this whole entire episode was like a kissing bandit. She wanted her lips on everybody. She was like, it is Pride weekend and I am about to be queer as hell. <laughs> I could tell. I, it was, that was the energy she was giving. But it was the much needed fun that we needed in this episode because child, you had the one person who was making it not fun for anybody. And yeah, anyway, you can probably guess who it was, but 
So um, Julia and Marisol start to get flirty because Marisol's in this van too. And also Lisa and Larsa are also in this van. But anyway, Julia and Marisol gets flirty and starts kissing as well. So I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm kissing Marisol. <laughs> and then Marisol in her confessional, it was like, she was joking. She's like, you know, Julia's kind of like that little boy, like in grade school who picks on you, but they really like you. I just hope now she leaves me alone. If I, if all I gotta do is keep kissing her, that works. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> it was funny, it was cute. Anyway, so then Lisa discussed the settlement and she has to review it on their way there. So she's actually reading over the paperwork on the way there. And then we do find out what the one thing was that Lenny was talking about. She, in his settlement, he does not want another man permanently residing with her in the settlement. And then we find out that Lisa throws it back in her face. You wrote throws back in Lenny's face, like, well, what about the woman that's permanently residing in your, you know, with you? And he basically states obvious. I'm paying for this. And this here, outside of Lisa's behavior, ladies, I'm about to let's 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 have a conversation real quick. Come here, come, come here. Let's, let's get closer here. Yeah, yeah. Ladies, I'm going to need you to never put yourself in this kind of situation. I know the idea of being kept is cute and whatnot. But if you're going to live that life, you better always find a way somehow to have an F.U. fun. So you can get out and not have to rely on your man, the ex-man or the next man to keep you afloat, okay? I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this and, and, and like, cause I am someone for a little bit, I was a little bit dependent. I, I will definitely admit it. I was dependent actually when I first moved to like this state. Um, cause I didn't live in the city, I lived in the burbs for a while and I was dependent. Child, that step for wise life got old for me so quickly. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm going to do what I need to do to get up out of this. That was just me. I, I'm not built for it. I'm not going to have anyone control my destiny in life ever. Okay? <laughs> so I'm going to need... This needs to be a cautionary tale. Ignore her behavior because her behavior is very much a teenager. But like, outside of that... Don't do this type of behavior and don't have a, and, and not have a fun. You better not. You better have you a fun or have a job or something on the side. I, I'm not even playing. Anyway, moving on. So, Larsa states the obvious and child. Larsa, this episode, this is what, okay. I get, I go back and forth with Larsa so much because when Larsa's in her super logical bag and not being self-absorbed, I love her. I actually do. She brings it when she's that way. But when she's just being really self-absorbed and kind of annoying and talking in her fake voice, her fake voice, I can't, I can't stand it. Because when she's logical, she's actually talking. I don't know if any of y'all ever catch this with Larsa. When she's talking in her normal, assertive voice, it's not the same as her... It hurt my feelings. It's not the same. It's a different voice. It's her actual voice is when she's just keeping it real. And this case, she did it multiple times this episode, but it wasn't really mean. The person that was receiving it thought it was mean, but it wasn't. It was still giving kid, kid gloves. Considering how Larsa talks to people, it was kid gloves. I'm just going to say that. But anyway... In her confessional, though, Larsa states that she needs to cut him off and move forward. So, I mean, I don't know what she means by that, but um, for me, my opinion is she needs to just sign that settlement agreement until you get yourself on your feet and then move on. And if the money's gone, the money's gone. But 
you need to sign it real quick. Get that, get that stuff over with. I was about to say the S word. Get over with. And then build your money up, build your funds up. That's yours and yours only. And then move on. And honestly, at the end of the day, if y'all are fully divorced and the settlement deal is signed or whatever, I, I guess he is a pretty powerful man where he would be able to check to see if she has men there all the time, a man there all the time. But I mean, can he do that legally without be, that being considered stalking? Because to me, I feel like there's ways around it. <laughs> I would just be looking that way. I was like, you know, I'll sign it. Don't worry about it. And try to find a way around it. Or um, build your funds up while you're taking the money. And then break the settlement agreement and be like, oh, well. Because at the end of the day, you don't need to own a house. You can rent the house. Have him rent it. Build your own money up. And then move. Or how about this? You could always, the house that he ends up buying you, still build your money up. And then when you realize you're going to break it, sell that house, get wherever the house is worth, you know, and then find something that's a little bit more affordable on your end. Like get a bigger house than what, actually, what you actually need. And I mean... Child, I would think it's home. I would find I would find a way around it. I really would. But anyway, that's just me. Um, so in the other van, we um uh, found out that the ladies go to see we found out that the other ladies actually saw where Adrian's gonna be performing at because it was across the street from the church. And child, it looks like a big it's a big deal. It is a big deal. It was a huge space, and Adrian's super nervous and understandably so um so in the other van lisa does end up signing the settlement agreement and the ladies do a ride and the gondola rides oh my gosh it's so cute it's actually more of like a party bus type deal or party boat type thing so it's not like a romantic like italian thing or what you have like in venice or um in vegas or even like in um, Venice beach california because they also have gondola rides there just in case you didn't know that um <laughs> but um it's more so it's colorful it's colorful it's beautiful um but anyway alexia ends up got to name the boat and she names it miami mamacitas and they have some food on the boat they got drinks in the boat and Everyone else is ready to turn up except for Lisa. Lisa cannot get outside her feelings and she's just crying, being emotional, being a party pooper, and she's literally hijacking this whole event. And why mean she hijacked this event? She hijacked the whole thing for the most part. This was her doing her best to make things about her the whole time. And I'll break down everything that happens as it as it progresses because child, I would want to be off that. I would I'm not gonna say I was gonna say I would threw her off that boat. <laughs> I would have threw her off the boat. I would have, I would have. Um sorry, I'm skipping ahead because you will understand why I tell you. You definitely will. But anyway, moving so on. what's annoying about how much she's hijacking it. It's like Gertie is actually the one who's comforting her. That's the other thing that makes me mad about this. It's like, Lisa, I know divorces are hard, but life is hard, okay? And you're not fighting for your life. You're fighting for your fate. You're fighting for your materialistic life, not your actual life. And I was just fuming. I was already getting annoyed because Gertie, of all people, is the one who's comforting her when it should be the other way around. And not once have I seen Lisa give her any energy of comforting her. Not once. This whole entire season, all the other ladies have rallied and had moments to comfort her except for Lisa. Even Larsa has done it. Larsa did it in the church. I mean, yeah, Larsa, I don't even want to give Larsa Bell, but in this case, 
Child, Larsa comfort her. And you won't even do it. You're so, ooh, you're so self-absorbed. And I'm, I can't help to feel, is it because of something? We'll, we'll go into it. We'll get into it. I don't want to throw that on her jacket, but based off of what she did later on, I'm, I, mm, I'm go, I might have to do it. But anyway, she finally stops crying so they can finally get on the ride. And it's like literally like a child, like dealing with a child. So then Lisa wants to try to row the boat. She wants to take over the gondolier's like um, role and roll the boat. And the rest of the ladies are kind of like, girl, no, like you aren't dressed for this. And if you fall into the water, we're not helping you out. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She literally is acting like a child. And um, she's doing this. And while this happens, while this is happening, all the other ladies are eating. And Emilio, like Emilio Esteban, um, you know, Gloria's husband and major ass Miami producer, he actually FaceTimes Adriana to check up, check up on her and make sure she's ready for the performance tomorrow and wishes her good luck. And as all this has happened, all the ladies were like riling, um, riling or like around, um, around um, Adriana, I know this in the background. I don't know if anyone, anybody else caught it. Lisa's in the background noticing that no one's paying attention to her. And she looks annoyed that no one's paying attention to her. And this is the energy I've been getting from her for day one. This, at least, especially this season. She is being, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. She's literally a child. <laughs> So the ladies are cheering. The ladies end up cheering to Adrian's performance. Um, Alexia states in her confessional that she actually is so for Adrian's performance. She's like, she loves her music, even though she can't stand Adrian's behavior. And hopefully, child, she'll leave her alone. <laughs> like, you know, the cute little shady, fun shade. And then they do also end up, and it's really Adriana who cheers to Lisa becoming a butterfly. Because... Lisa's ego just needs to be stroked that badly because it can't be about anyone else other than her for too long. <sighs> anyway, the ladies do bring up um, Jody and the fact that he finally gets a break. And <laughs> they said it in a way where Lisa didn't catch it. They were actually shading her. They're like, girl, I'm like, I'm, 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 because they were literally stating the fact like, I bet Jody's so happy to not be hearing from you right now because you are too much. And then <laughs> Larsa takes it a step further and oh man, Larsa decided to clock in this episode and I was happy for it. She was like, yeah, um, you know, because if you would lose Jody, you would regret it. I'm <laughs> just staying obvious. And, um, and then like Lisa's like, I don't know why you would say that. And like Larsa's like, I know any other man who'll put up with your stuff. And again, I'm on Larsa's side on this one. Larsa had said nothing wrong. It was all facts. And Lisa is just like, oh, clutching her pearls over what she's saying. And it's like, girl. And Larsa's like, you're super needy. So, I mean, I don't know why you're surprised by what I'm saying. You're super needy. And it's like, Lisa is so delusional that she doesn't even realize she's even being needy within this group. You literally need all the attention. You literally have another cast member who is fighting for their life. You have other cast members who've been divorced before that did not get this many kid gloves is what you're getting. It's like, and the other cast members had just as high a profile of a divorce as you did. Hell. Larsa's trumps you all, okay, when it comes to high-profile divorce. But she also is not a dummy. She made out like a bandit when it came to that divorce, which is one thing about Larsa, I will respect the hustle. I don't like her a lot, and usually, but I don't know. Sometimes when she's on the right side of history, I can't help but to say, hey, she got it. I'm going to give people who I don't necessarily care for their due when they, they, they need it. And this is... <laughs> this is the episode where 
Lasha showed up in the right way. But anyway, so then Lisa rebuts and say, you're a bully. And she literally sounded like that. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> she said, you're a bully. That's how she sounded to me. That's what I heard. And Larsa's response is like, okay. <laughs> I was like, Larsa, yes. I mean, when Larsa's right, she's right. I can't even, again, I just, it is what it is. But anyway, so then Adriana tries to cape for um, Lisa and the ladies stop her right away. It's like, no, 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 you need to save your voice for tomorrow, which is true. You, you, don't, you can't be arguing today. You got to sit this one out. <laughs> and so Adriana's like, okay, I'm sitting it out, I'm sitting it out. And, you know. She can't, can't be doing no arguing and then next thing you know, you you don't have a voice come to your performance and make a complete by yourself. Yeah, so Adriana sat it out. They change the mood. And Lisa says she wants to go sw go for a swim. Again, it's just this a constant att attention-seeking behavior with Lisa. I can't. Um, Larsa's caping for her in a confessional saying, I like... Lisa's spiraling, <laughs> which, yeah, she's spiraling, but mm -mm. I can't stand for you when you have certain, like, I can't give you grace when you do some of the other things that you've been doing. The microaggressions, I can't do it. Um, the ladies state that they, well, okay, we should play true for dare and you could jump in the water. And then she said, oh my gosh, no, I'll probably get herpes and die. She literally sounded like that to me. And then the ladies look at her the same way. I was like, and Dr. Nicole in her professional states the obvious. She's like, does she not know what STD is? It's a sexually transmitted disease. So therefore you can't get it in water. Like this kind of water. I mean, you can get like, you know, but like malaria and that, <laughs> but like, come on, like just know what the diseases, diseases could be. But anyway, so then Julia wants to kiss everybody again. So she kisses Marisol yet again. She tried to kiss Adriana. Adriana's like, uh, I am very reserved about who gets this. It was cute. She said that in a confessional. And then the ride continues and then they see a shack, like a, a house shack, like on the side of like the river. Um, very common to see. And then the ladies, not all the ladies, but a lot of the ladies make kind of some off-putting comments about it. It wasn't horrible, but it was ignorant. <laughs> it was pretty ignorant. Um, I didn't feel as much of a way because I... It, it doesn't hit as close. I feel like if, you, if you've if you ever been in a situation where you lived in that kind of environment, you would feel away. So it's ignorant enough when it comes to that. I So for me, I didn't personally feel attacked because it's not something that is personal to me, but it was still ignorant. That was like pretty much the comment that they said. I don't remember what the comment was, but Kiki's actually offended and she's keeping it to herself um, because literally that's where she came from. She literally lived in houses like that growing up because she's from Haiti. So she's just like, I literally lived in houses like this. And they're basically, the comment that they said literally kind of alluded to like the third world country. It, it came off like that. Like these, the people who live in this type of environment are third world country. And she's like, they're just trying to do their best to make a living. Like, I don't even know why the comment was needed. It was just, it was an unnecessary comment. Let's just, I guess I could have just said that. But anyway, so then they see these white dogs and they appear to be stray dogs, but they don't know that because they're not from there. <laughs> okay, let's, let's be real here. And the ladies try to ask David, who was like, you know, the gondolier, like, hey, what's going on with these dogs? Because they're white and they're different. Like, they're, they look different than like dogs you would see here in the States. They just probably, just they just wanted to know. Lisa takes it a step way too far. And this is where Lisa was doing too much. 
And this is where I'm done with Lisa. Lisa is on timeout for the rest of the season. I don't care what she says. I don't care what she does. I'm over her. I, I don't care. I don't care. Because she proceeds to try to feed them. The food that they're eating, she tries to feed them. So she starts throwing the food across the gondola ride, is going into the water, basically littering, like exposing the environment to foreign things. Like it's, it was environmentally messed up that she was doing this. She doesn't know the situation with these dogs. She doesn't know if these dogs are allergic to whatever she's feeding them. Because by the way, the food that they're eating, it's not bland. I know it's not. <laughs> they're eating like Mexican food. Pets can't, a lot of pets can't really have spices. You don't know any of these pet situations. You could kill the pets feeding them like human food. But her privilege behind thought it would be a good idea to do that. And while she's doing this, and also too, side note, they're in a foreign country. <laughs> Littering in a foreign country can get you put in jail. Messing with someone's potential property can put you in jail. Because again, she doesn't know if these dogs belong to anyone or not. She's literally just going off what she sees being on a boat. And so while this is happening, Gertie is begging her to stop it. She's like, no, don't, no, no, no. And she still just keeps doing it like a child. And Kiki this whole entire time is sitting there and she's literally looking like Beatrice Kiddo from Kill Bill. In the background, she is, she's getting really, really upset because she's still mad from the last thing that they said. It's just like, it's building up. And even Alexia asked her to stop. She's like, please stop. And she still isn't stopping. And then, but she's saying it in a way that's like, not like bossing her around. It's like, hey, can you please stop doing that? Like everyone's saying it like that. They're, they're literally treating her with kid gloves. And then David, the owner of the boat, she states, yeah, you need to stop doing that. That's like not legal, <laughs> what you're doing. And he even says like in Spanish, like the dog owners will feed them. And then she makes it worse. And this is what she says. <sighs> She's probably feeding them better food than they ever had their whole entire life. Can you tell me what that means, Lisa? What does that mean? And this look that I have, Kiki had the same exact look. And it was look, the look I have, and, and this is where you had me effed up at. Because it's like... The audacity, the entitlement. Why would you assume just because these people live in a shack that their animals and stuff are not taken care of? Maybe they want us, maybe this is a simple life that they rather have. You don't know anything about these people that you're making these assumptions about. Yeah, it was ignorant. So ignorant, done. Done, done. So. Needless to say, Kiki confronts her about it. And she's like, no, that wasn't cool. Why would you say something like that? And she's saying in a very calm voice, that's not cool. Why would you say something like that? And then Lisa gets pretty much aggressive with her and starts standing up. And she's all like, don't stand up. If you're going to stand up, I'm going to stand up. And then Lisa does this. And I'm like, hmm. Lisa, would you do that if Kiki wasn't black? I'm just gonna say it. Would you do that if she wasn't black? Because what is this? Why are you doing that? And Kiki was actually not being mean. She didn't, and Lisa cursed at her first. And then even Larsa was trying to like stop Lisa from doing that. She's like, now Lisa now. 
And we, and Larson and her professionals was just like, where I come from, you stand up and start pointing your finger at me. That's what gets you messed up. I'm just like, see, this, <laughs> like Larsa gets it. I mean, come on now. You don't do that. Larsa's like, child, wrong road. And so Lisa's still trying to get her, still trying to do this, basically being disrespectful. And Kiki's begging with her to stop being disrespectful, stop being mean. And then she keeps, and then Lisa keeps cussing at her to the point where um, Kiki threw, threw like a juice box at her. And then she went from this big bad to all of a sudden say, you assaulted me. You assaulted me. How dare you? I was like, wow, you are literally being a Karen. That was the most Karen behavior I have ever seen and I ain't ever seen it in my life. And so, and then she just starts yelling like, you are not she literally sounded like that. It was it was like unwatchable. I wanted to just put her on mute. Mute while she's doing all this. And Kiki's getting elevated and like, Lisa, you found the right one. And also, Kiki, props to you for holding your composure. Because if that was me, I would have threw you off that boat. <laughs> it wouldn't even gotten that far. You wouldn't be able to even cuss at me or none of that. You would have been, I would have threw you off the boat. The scene with Fade to Black, I would have been kicked off the housewives and just whipping over with. I wouldn't have cared. I, I just, no. <laughs> like, I just went through, through, through you off the boat. Like, okay. See if you can find those herpes down there. I, I just went, I just went through you. I went just through you. Because I was, I was fuming. Anyway. So everyone's trying to control Lisa's childish meltdown. I mean, everyone. And um, she finally does, every, they do finally get her to sit down. And both Larsa and Alexia have Kiki's back. They were like, you were wrong. Why would you do that? And then literally, Lisa, and, and then Gertie also is trying to say, why would you do this? And just she's just shaking her head because Gertie cannot fully engage in this. Y'all already know she can't because she is fighting for her life, actually. Like, not this cosplay version of what Lisa got going on. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. You, you'll be fine. You make money off this show, you'll be fine. Anyway. So. Yeah, Gertie couldn't get involved. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep calm because I'm just so annoyed by it. But anyway, so then Lisa snaps at everyone and tells everyone to F off, like literally. But then Alexia being the sharpest sharp throws it right back at her. She's like, okay, F you. <laughs> I mean, you're saying this to all of us. Like, and we're all we're trying to do is trying to calmly help you. And she didn't say it loud to her or nothing. She said it just like in the normal, normal voice. Like, we're just trying to help you. And you're doing too much. And literally, it just shows that Lisa cannot handle it. She can't handle her behavior thrown back at her. And also, too... She didn't continue to step to, um, she didn't continue with that aggression with, um, Alexia. Why is that? I'm just saying, why are you, why do you have, your energy with Alexia is not the same as your energy with, or even with, um, Larsa. Not the same kind of energy is what you have for Kiki and in also previous episodes, Gertie. I've been paying attention the whole entire time with you. I'm just saying. Anyway, so Adriana asked Dave to turn the boat around because, child, this is it's becoming the gondola ride from hell. And um, Larsa tried to get the ladies to rally and pray because, you know, she's like, hey, we had an awesome day at church. Let's at least try to end it in a good note. And... Everyone is, okay, let's do this. And then even Kiki is like, I really want to flip over this boat right now. But yeah, we need prayer. And Lisa's in the corner, corner pouting. And Lars is like, were you a baby? What, what is this? And I'm just like, yeah. Um, but 
the thing that the, what kills me with this like Kiki even joins in prayer even though she was one who was disrespected first but anyway so then the mood changes yet again <laughs> when you think it can't get wilder it gets wilder but in a different way they end up being in the island of dolls I don't know if you y'all have ever heard of that, but it's like this area where you're on the gondola ride and then there's dolls just hanging everywhere from the trees. And the Dave um, does explain to them the legend behind it, but this is actually triggering Julia and she starts to lose it because the dolls to her look like babies. So she literally... She's not getting amusement out of it. She's like, she's get, she's becoming hysterical. And she just starts crying. And um, yeah, so then uh, Marisol and Alexia, they're comforting her. And that is where the episode ends. And previews from the next episode, like I mentioned, it is spicy. It's still spicy. So in the next episode, we see they're still going to be in the gondola ride. Adriana's going to perform. They're going to party. And I'm hoping this preview is not one of those false advertising previews, but it looks like Kiki ends up, um, there, there's going to be another round. There's going to be another round. Anyway, that does conclude the video. I know this is much longer than my most of my videos, but a lot of things happened here that triggered me and a lot happened with this episode. Again, Miami is bringing it. And so there's a lot to talk about with Miami. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.